So you've decided to tackle the PMP exam and now you're looking at the PMP exam application and you're wondering, how do I fill it out? Well, we're here to help. My name is Bill Yates. I work with Velociteach. We are a provider of PMP training and we know a lot about the exam application. We've helped thousands of people overcome this first obstacle in seeking the PMP. So we'll walk through this together and discuss these uh, elements related to the PMP exam application. Now, I've mentioned that I work for Velociteach. We are a registered education provider with PMI, with the Project Management Institute, and we are an award-winning REP. So uh, we know what we're talking about, and uh, I have the PMP credential, the PGMP, and the PMI ACP credential as well. So I've been through this a time or two. So the three areas that we're going to talk about. First, who is PMI and what is the PMP? Secondly, how do I fill out the PMP exam application? And then third, what can you tell me about the PMP exam? Now, here we're going to really focus on the second question. How do I fill out the PMP exam application? What does it look like? What is PMI looking for? So that's where we'll spend most of our time in this conversation. The first question we wanted to tackle is simply this. Who is PMI? So PMI stands for the Project Management Institute. It was established in 1969. The website is PMI.org. It's a not-for-profit. It's the world's leading project management association. And it's the organization that generates the ANSI standard for project management, the PMBOK guide. So there are over 4 million PMBOK guides that have been published and are out in circulation. That's as of 2014. Now, the PMBOK guide describes a framework. It's not a methodology. It's not a how-to guide for managing projects, but it does provide a very helpful framework. Now, PMI offers seven certifications. PMP is the key credential, so that's where we'll focus. We know that PMI stands for the Project Management Institute, but what about the PMP? What is the PMP? It's the project management professional. It's a distinction. It's a credential that sets you apart as a project manager. Uh, many times when I'm explaining to a friend, I'll describe or compare the PMP uh, to the CPA. So if you're an accountant and you want to um, achieve a professional credential, the CPA is a great credential or achievement. The same is true for the project manager, so the PMP designation. Uh, so because of the popularity of it, it's a globally recognized and demanded certification. So you see a couple of quotes here that are related to that. Let me share a statistic with you as well. Uh, this is from November 30, 2013. There are 593,074 project managers who have earned the PMP. If you're still on the fence about pursuing this PMP certification, let's take a look at the benefits together. It really benefits you as an individual and the organization that you're a part of. So the PMP certification is a validation. It's a validation of both your experience, your knowledge, and your ability. It shows a proven understanding of current tools, processes, and terminology. It means that you've been exposed to best practices, to industry standards, the PMBOK guide, and that you're able to apply these to any project in any industry. So project management goes across many industries and many disciplines. It means that, or it implies that you have the ability to get the most out of limited resources as well. Um, those that have the PMP credential have been exposed to certain terminology and certain, uh, a certain framework or knowledge base. So it brings about a common language. Uh, everyone speaks the same language once they've been through the PMP certification. So many companies uh, like for their project managers to go through similar training and be exposed to similar practices so that they have a common language and a common exposure. We've mentioned a few of the benefits to pursuing the PMP credential. Now let's get personal with that. If you were to open a browser and just do a search for top paying project management jobs, you'd note that the PMP credential makes a difference. So the reality is if you earn the PMP credential, 
You can earn more money as a project manager. So it's good for you. It's good for your company for you to earn this PMP credential. So just more benefits to you. And we'll share a few of those statistics with you. A final point to hit before we really focus on the PMP exam application. Who should pursue the PMP? Well, quite simply, individuals that are involved in leading and directing projects. Now, you don't have to have project manager on your business card. It doesn't have to be your formal title in order to apply for the exam. PMI defines a project as a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. So, given that definition of a project and the work that you do, you've probably spent some time either leading or directing projects or tasks within those projects and therefore would qualify and be perhaps be interested in pursuing this PMP. So given all that, let's talk about the application. Now we're to the meat of the matter. How do I fill out the PMP exam application? Well, begin by going online. We'll provide the link. We suggest that you complete the application online. That way you can save your progress. You don't have to do it all in one sitting and submit it. You can come back to it. When I was filling out my application, I thought I had all my documents that I needed and I had to save it and go do some more research, find out more uh, data from my past projects and then return to the application and fill out those pieces. So that's a nice feature of doing the application online. Uh, typically, it takes a project manager somewhere between two and six hours to complete the application. Just depends on how many projects you need to use in order to hit the criteria that they're asking for. So let's talk about that. Let's dig into the details. Now we're looking at the PMP certification application. Page one, it's asking for your basic information, your name, your address. One tip or one thing to focus on here is section two, name on government issued identification. You want to make sure that the name that shows up on your driver's license or on your passport that is a government issued identification is going to match how you register for the PMI PMP exam. The reason is when you go to Prometric to take the exam, you're going to be asked to show a photo identification and you want the name to match that that you've used when you filled out the application and submitted your application to sit for the exam. On page two of the application, I want you to note an area that's entitled highest level of education attained at the time of this application. Here you're going to indicate high school diploma, bachelor's degree, doctoral, master's, etc. Now here's how that uh, impacts the rest of your application. If high school diploma or equivalency is the highest that you've reached, then you're required to document 7,500 hours of project experience. That drops dramatically to 4,500 hours if you have a bachelor's degree. So we'll see this in the next part of the application, but you'll see how it syncs up with this particular piece here. You'll note that there are two significant areas in the PMP exam application. The requirements related to contact training hours are specific, and the requirements related to project experience are also explicit. So let's talk about both of those. The requirement of 35 contact training hours has to take place within the topics of project management or project management education. So it's listed as they need to cover some of the topics or be related to the knowledge areas referred to in the PMBOK guide. Now, the education can be completed in a number of different areas or different sources. We'll discuss those next. However, let me simplify one thing. One contact hour, a contact training hour, is defined as one hour spent completing an educational activity. And another nice thing to note, there's no time limitation for the eligibility. So you can go back pretty far on your contact training hours. The first requirement is for 35 contact hours of project management training. Now, referencing page four of the application, you'll see that there are categories A through F for where you can receive that education. At the top, category A, a PMI registered education provider. 
at the bottom, F, university or college, academic and continuing education programs. So these are all places that are eligible for you to obtain your contact hours to apply for the exam. Note also on the application it states the following education does not satisfy the education requirements. PMI chapter meetings on general topics and self-study and then in parens it says reading books. Now I'll mention my boss, the CEO of Velocity Teach, is Andy Crow. He's written the top-selling prep book called The PMP Exam, How to Pass on Your First Try. We use it in all of our courses. So it's an excellent resource. I highly recommend it. Our materials are synced up with it. However, if you're wanting to earn the contact hours by reading a book, that's not enough. So what do you do? If you can't attend a live class, what options do you have? You can do online learning, or you can take advantage of some of these other categories that are listed. For online learning, Velocity Teach has an option. It's called Insight, and you can earn all 35 contact hours there. And as it's noted on page four of the application, those contact hours are already registered with PMI because we are a registered education provider, so they count. Another requirement is your project management experience. Let's refer to page three of the PMP certification application. It's entitled Experience Verification. This is where you list the projects that you need in order to hit the 4,500 or the 7,500 hours that are required. So you list the project. You give it a name, a start date, a completion date, talk about the industry and name the organization. You also select the role. So again, the role could be that you're directing certain tasks or managing tasks. You'll see a drop down if you do the application online so you can select the appropriate role there. Keeping in mind that you don't have to be the project manager on that project. Now one other thing I'll, I want you to make note of, there's a place to list a primary contact. First name, last name, contact information, including an email address. If you were to be audited, that would be a random event, but if you are audited, PMI may follow up on these contacts in order to verify the project experience that you've claimed. So be sure you've got accurate and up-to-date information. And I think it's a great idea to contact those individuals that you're going to list and give them a heads up just in case you are audited so they're able to uh, respond quickly and appropriately to those questions. Now at the bottom of page three, you notice a section where you're to list the number of hours and describe the activities that you carried out for this project. So this is where you go into more details describing the project, what your role was, and they're divided up by process groups. We'll have more to say about that later and give you some advice, some guidelines. Let's recap that project management experience. So we've said with a bachelor's degree or higher, your requirement is 4,500 hours over three years, a minimum of three years. High school degree or equivalent, you're looking at 7,500 hours and five years. And in all cases, you want to show evidence that you've been leading or directing project tasks. And we'll talk about the five process groups. So PMI wants evidence that you've had experience in project activities across the board, all the way from initiating to closing. So we'll talk about those process groups. Next, we're going to walk through an example of project management experience and lay out for you the 36-month and 4,500-hour examples or, or requirements in the form of an example. So first, let's draw a timeline. You can go back eight years to gather project management experience. So let's say we had a project that started nine years ago but part of it overlaps into that eighth year. So here's a project. It's a 12-month project, 1,300 hours that I could record for it. However, I can only go back eight years. So perhaps only nine months occurred within that window based on my application date and maybe only 975 hours instead of the full 1,300. Okay, now let's just for uh, the sake of uh, illustration... Let's talk about three projects that perhaps there's an overlap going on. So projects B, C, and D. So B and D, those are pretty clear. 
Project B is 18 months, 1,000 hours. Project D is 12 months, 100 hours. But I started on Project D only after Project B was complete. So I can count all 100 hours from D and the 12 months that I participated in it. Now look at Project C. So Project C took place over 24 months, but it overlaps with B and D. So I'm not able to count those 24 months in addition to the months I've already counted towards the total of 36. However, the hours do count because I was working on more than one project at a time. It's very common. So 1,500 hours, I can count all of those. So I've got my total hours of 3,575. My months do not total 63. They're down to 39 months. So I'm not quite at my 4,500. I've got more to go. But this gives you a sense for the impact that the application date, the eight-year window, and potential overlaps could have on your PM experience. Taking a deeper look at the project descriptions on page three of the application, think about this. You want to make your role in the project very clear. How were you leading and directing project tasks? What actions did you take? You don't have a lot of room to do that. You have, a, you have to provide a summary only using 500 characters. So you may want to use Microsoft Word or some other application to do a character count and get your description very precise and be able to copy paste it into the online application. Finally, think about wording and terminology that's consistent with that used in the PMBOK guide. So you want to speak the language of PMI when filling out the PMI application. So those are a few tips to keep in mind. Page three of the application also asks you to report your activities and your hours by process group. But what are these process groups? Well, PMI describes 47 processes that make up the framework of project management. These 47 processes can be categorized two ways, one by knowledge area and one by process group. So knowledge areas are things such as integration management, scope, time, cost, quality, human resources, communication, risk, procurement, and stakeholder management. Those are the 10. The five process groups describe common activities or common attributes within those processes. So those are initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, controlling, and closing. So you are asked to categorize your hours and your description of project activities by those five process groups. In the following, we'll provide some description of activities that are common within each of these five process groups. And we'll also give you an estimate, this again, just a ballpark estimate, for typical percentage of time spent in each process group. So this will just give you a guideline. This will help you as you review your participation, your activities on your projects, and just uh, give you a template to compare those against, figuring out which category they fit into, and is it a reasonable amount of time. As you describe the activities and tasks that took place in that project, you may want to make use of some effective words that help describe or delineate what your role was. So we'll just make a recommendation and you can reference these as you work through the application. The steps to begin the application and finalize or submit the application are, are pretty straightforward. So you have 90 days, you have a 90 day window to start the application and then submit it. You have a five business day wait to wait and hear back from PMI after it's been submitted. Once you've heard back, you'll have the opportunity to pay for the exam. And then after you've paid for the exam, you'll receive a number, a verification number that you'll be able to use to schedule your exam with a Prometric testing center. PMI encourages membership and you can see that when it comes to the PMP exam fees. It actually comes out better for you financially. You save a few dollars if you go ahead and join PMI the first year. When you're taking your exam, your fee will be at a reduced rate. So you pay your membership fee, $139. You have a PMP exam fee, $405 as a member. So for a total of $544, if you were to just take the exam, 
without joining, then it's $555. So that's one thing to keep in mind as you consider the, the different options for paying for the PMP exam. Earlier, I mentioned there is a possibility that you will be audited when you submit your application. I can assure you it's completely random. They are not picking you out. <laughs> you didn't do anything wrong. It is a random event. Uh, I can think back to many years ago, the first PMP preparation course I taught, we had about 12 people in the room and the most senior and quite frankly, the oldest person in the room, that was the one guy that got audited. So uh, it is random. Now, if you get audited, don't worry about it. It's just going to slow you down for a, maybe a few days. You submit your documentation to PMI. You have to provide a proof of education, the contact hours, the certificate of completion, such as the, the courses that we offer. We always provide those, so everyone should have one of those. And then verification of experience. Again, that gets back to contacting that primary contact that you provide on the application, making sure that they're aware that you may need their help in the case of an audit. Let's recap this application process. So we mentioned a 90-day window. So complete your 35 contact training hours. When you apply online, you do have that 90-day window from start to finish to submit the application. You can join PMI or not. That's optional. You'll receive a, an email from PMI that your application has been accepted. You'll be asked or given the privilege of submitting your exam fee payment. At that time, you'll find out if you're audited. If you are audited, you provide a little more information. It may slow you down for a few days. And then you pass that PMI audit and you receive your identification code. If you don't get audited, then you also receive that identification code. That's the piece that you need. That's the uh, key that unlocks your ability to schedule the exam with Prometric. And that website is www.prometric.com. Well, we've covered that PMP exam application. Now, let's just spend a couple of minutes talking about the PMP exam itself. As you probably already know, it's a standardized exam. You're given four hours to complete an exam of 200 questions. Now, all questions are multiple choice with clear answers A, B, C, and D. It's not an adaptive test. So when you sit down and begin the exam, you'll receive all 200 questions and you can go through them at your own pace. You can jump back and forth, etc. This is a pass-fail exam. So once you pass this exam, you can tell everybody you got an A+. They'll never know. So it's a pass-fail exam. That's a bit about the exam. Now, what about the question allocation on the exam? With the rollout of the fifth edition of the PMBOK guide, there was a change to the PMP exam that took effect July 31st, 2013. Based on the exam specification of that date, this is how the questions are going to be allocated across the process groups. So you can see the emphasis on planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling. But one of the strategies that we talk about in class is making sure that you master initiating and closing because there are only two processes per, yet there are 23 questions and 14 questions. So quite a lot to gain there. So anyway, that's a bit about the question allocation for the PMP exam. You also note the total is 175 questions, yet you're given 200. Well, you have 25 what are called quote-unquote pre-test questions that don't count for you or against you. So only 175 are graded, but those 25 are sprinkled throughout the 200. PMI is testing the validity of those questions, seeing how they perform, and considering putting those in future exams in the test bank. At Velociteach, we try to take the guesswork out of the PMP exam. We want the student to go in fully prepared and not have any surprises. So we have developed a number of techniques and materials that are designed for learners of all types. We've worked with adult learning theory specialists and tried to develop materials that resonate, that are memorable, that are uh, easy to comprehend, and that can remove the barriers for those project managers who aspire to earn the PMP. I want to applaud your goal of pursuing the PMP certification 
It's a tremendous goal. It brings a lot of benefits to you and your organization. And my final advice as you think about that exam is just relax. We've got this thing figured out. We know how to make you successful. So relax. Keep it all in perspective. Maybe there's a special place in your mind, a vacation spot, a book you want to read, a car you want to buy, a special vacation you want to take, whatever it may be. Keep that that goal in mind as you pursue and as you put in the hours to pursue this PMP credential. It's worth the investment and we can help you get there. So final advice, relax. That's going to wrap up our discussion. We talked about the Project Management Institute and the PMP and why pursue it. We talked about the PMP exam itself and some of the elements that are a part of it. But most of our time was spent on the PMP certification application. So we went through many detailed elements of that. If you have any questions, feel free to follow up with us. We'll put some contact information on the screen. But we'd love to help. We've helped many people just like you. It's natural to have questions about the application or to have apprehensions about the exam. We've been there. We've done that. We've helped thousands of people achieve that goal. So we're here for you.